What is going on everybody? Hey, I've been enjoying this Pelican so much, I wanted to give y'all an update. Some of the gear that we're bringing, how we're using it, what we're doing with it, and why. This boat has been pretty magical. You know how I am with boats. I'll, I'll get rid of them if I, don't find, if I don't like them at all. But this guy's sticking around for a reason. But today we're going to go through some of those reasons. Here's the number one reason why I love the Pelican. I can roadside launch it like a kayak. Let's say we wanted to fish this flat way back here. It's a long kayak paddle. The only way to get to it easily is with a boat and the launch is way over here. Let's see how far that is in a boat to run that distance. Measure distance, yada yada. We'd have to come down the channel. This is one way to go. And then go under this bridge and come way down here and way back over here. That puts us at well over five miles. Well, that spot we're talking about is a brutal kayak paddle. But with a small motor, I can roadside launch like a kayak, drops me down to under three miles, and I can fish my way back there, because this boat drafts like three inches of water, man, and I can fish my way back to the truck. It's really direct. I load the Pelican by myself all the time. I keep some Wilderness Systems wheels that I just set it on top of, and I roll it over to the truck. Once I get it to the truck, I set it on the lip of the bed and walk around to the back and I just lift and just slide it right in. If I had an aluminum boat, I'd have to put some carpet back there to keep it from gouging my new bed liner. The plastic is very soft. And then it's just a matter of two permanent ropes that I keep tied in the bed of the truck that I attach to it and we're ready to go. Let's take a close look at this pick and you can see the pink bag in the front is Teresa's. That's all her must-haves when she goes on a trip. It's waterproof. On the left side there, you can see I've migrated away from two parking poles to a stand-up paddleboard paddle. Teresa helps me scoot along from time to time with that. And a 12-foot parking pole. I'll get into that later, but that's critical for push pulling the flats. We also have a board in the front, a board in the back, we have two throwable cushions. Underneath the backboard, I've got two life preservers. We have two rods each. Hers are in the front, mine are in the back. And then in the middle there, we've got a bucket for throwing odds and ends in. And then we have a Ingle 13 quart cooler that has all of our tackle, fish grips, pliers, everything we need. It's a grab and go tackle supply cooler. And that stays that way. On the back, we have a Suzuki 2.5 outboard. Why the 2.5? Well, the 2.5 weighs 30 pounds. I can lift it up into the bed of the truck and lay it down. If it's muddy, I can wade out in the mud and set it on the back of the transom, no problem. If I were to jump up to a five or six, you're talking about going from 30 to like 50, 60 pounds and sinking into the mud and holding that, something that heavy is, is a disaster for me. I'm gonna break an ankle or something. So I really like to manipulate that 2.5. I can throw it around. Once you jump up to fives and sixes, I'll gladly put that on a trailer and back it in, but not carrying and manipulating and throwing it around. No, the 2.5's for me. So like I said earlier, that Engel 13 quart has all our tackle, fish grips and pliers and everything we need for the day inside of it. But I've also started doubling it as a seat when I'm running the outboard and I need a little height. It works pretty well. I'm digging it. Okay, what park and pole push pole am I using? What I'm doing is I'm taking a two piece eight foot parking pole and then I'm buying the extra four foot piece so when I screw all three together I have a 12 foot push pole very thin in diameter it's perfect for the amount of height I have on the pelican and it's light and it floats I also use it as a stakeout the 12 foot parking pole is just the right length for the amount of height I have when I stand on my green board I'm able to walk it down a good distance it's very light and very comfortable on the hand. I love it for this situation. If I was any higher, I might need a 14, but at this height, I'm perfect with the 12. 
I can also use the parking pole as a stakeout. Do you see this blue rope, this loop that's hanging off? Well, if I have a semi-soft bottom and I want to stop this boat really quick, I can stick my parking pole in that loop and it anchors the boat out pretty quickly and easily. I also bring another option. See that three pound uh, dumbbell weight back there? I can just chunk that over when we really get into the fish. And as long as it's under 15 mile an hour wind, that thing usually holds very well. Let's talk about my boards. I got a blue one up front and a green one in the back. The boat has kind of ribs on it. You can see there in the middle. So having that quarter inch, half inch piece of plywood just gives your feet something comfortable to stand on other than ribs. Now on the back side, mine spans from the last little piece of the seat over to the corners of the back of the transom. This gives me a polling platform. I just found a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood to put back here and that gives me enough strength where I can stand dead center, no problems. And I just painted it with some random paint I had laying around. I absolutely love standing on that green board and push polling folks and letting them sight cast or standing up there and fly casting for myself. One of my favorite spots on this big earth is standing on that green board and casting. My newest addition to the Pelican is a drift sock. They come in many sizes. Um, I've got them anywhere from like the small ones on up to like a 42 inch giant one. And the reason I have different sizes for different wind speeds. I have kind of a medium size one that I kind of throw in there all the time. But if I know it's going to be 15 to 20, I take out that big 42 inch and I throw it in there. I didn't really have anywhere to tie it off to but there was some rowing mounts in the center of this Pelican and that's where you want a drift sock is dead center so you drift perpendicular to the wind. I took a drill bit that had like a socket on it, put a bunch of marine goop on it, just had it laying around the shop and I stuck it down in that rowing hole and uh, it made me a post to tie off my drift sock to. That's working really well. Well, I hope this gave you a little insight into how Teresa and I use our Pelican Intruder and as to why we just love it so much. Once again, super particular on the boat, so if I keep it for more than a month, you know it's a winner. <laughs> Until next time, we'll see you. And as always, what?